you know you can actually win your VA disability claim without any active duty medical evidence. And some of you have been banging your heads on the wall with a claim like sleep apnea for years because you're doing it as a direct claim when you probably have no chance of winning that type of claim. Well, with the strategies we'll talk about today, at the end of the video, you'll see how you can make one adjustment that might change your life. So having said that, uh, let's talk about the different claims that you don't need the evidence for from your active duty, your medical evidence. And first, we're going to talk about the conditions that get treated as presumptives. Now, presumptives are a big deal right now because of the PACT Act. Um, but these claims are not presumptive. They get treated like presumptive, in my opinion. Uh, the next type of claims are the presumptive claims on the PACT Act and just the presumptives that have been around forever. And finally, we're going to talk about secondary claims. You can file two presumptives that you keep losing as a direct claim. So stick around to the end because that's when we'll talk about the secondaries. So first, let's talk about tinnitus and PTSD. In my opinion, those two claims are treated as presumptive claims. Now, real quick, presumptive claim, what is that? It's a condition you have today because you were exposed to something from the service. You don't have active duty medical evidence, but the VA presumes that your disability today is caused by said exposure from the military. Now, this is only open to a select uh, few uh, conditions, and in my opinion, tinnitus is one of them. Why is that? Well, if you have tinnitus today and you had a job in the military that was loud, you were in combat perhaps, or you were exposed to loud noises through a special circumstance, it's obvious to think that the VA would presume you have tinnitus because of those exposures. Um, and it's so common in the military. That's why this is like one of the easiest claims to win, in my opinion, because think about the logic. I was an infantry guy. I was a tanker. I was an artillery guy. I was working in the engine room, a flight line. My job was loud, basically. And I have it on my DD-214 that it was loud. And there's actually a list that tells you what your risk level was is if you were a certain MOS. And so the VA presumes that if you're an artilleryman, let's say, then you have tinnitus today, there's a chance that your time as an artilleryman caused you to have tinnitus today. So you see how the logic works there. But there's other circumstances too, like let's say uh, you're in combat. Well, the VA presumes that combat is very loud, and if you have tinnitus ringing in your ears from explosions, gunshots, you know, shooting your weapon without ear, you know, ear protection, there you go, right? I'm rolling my eyes because it seems like it should be obvious. But those of you who have filed tinnitus and lost know that sometimes it's not, right? Just because you have a uh, story that makes sense in your records doesn't mean that you don't file a claim that is as strong as possible. So you still want to strengthen things. Never just assume that the VA is going to give it to you. You want to make it as strong as possible, in my opinion. So the last situation with tinnitus, which is funny, not if you're dealing with it, are those individuals that have a job that are low on the tinnitus risk list. However, um, there's a special circumstance that caused them to be exposed to loud noises. In my last unit, there was a clerk and there was a, a supply guy. Yeah, there are two of them. One was like the driver for the commander, the battalion commander, and then the sergeant major. Well, those guys never spent the day at S1 or S4. They were always out like at the training areas and I was at a heavy unit, so we had tanks, Bradleys, combined arms, all the, the full shebang, and like literally a <laughs> shebang. They, they just would always be at the range with the colonel, right? And it's not like they were just waiting in the vehicle all the time. Sometimes they're walking the lane with their boss, and it gets loud when there's more than small arms fire going off. And when you're exposed to that constantly, well, you know, if they had tinnitus today, they would have to explain why they have it because on paper, it looks like they're just a clerk. Hopefully that makes sense. But that's tinnitus, that's why I, I believe that is treated like a presumptive. The other one's PTSD. If you have PTSD today, a diagnosis of it, and you don't have any records in service, that's still a claim that most veterans can file because you know, the, no one ever complained about PTSD in the service. Very few people did, but a lot of people struggled with it. Post post uh, was that the post deployment health assessments were all a joke to us, right? We said no to every question. 
even the ones that said, do you have trouble sleeping? Do you have problems with nightmares, etc.?" The VA has conceded that veterans don't really complain about that type of thing. So for PTSD, it's one of those claims that I believe if you have a story and it's strong and you believe you have PTSD today, it's one that you should probably go for because you know, if you're telling the truth, you believe it happened and it's giving you problems today, whatever the event was, well, you have a chance at winning that claim. You don't have to have gone to the hospital in active duty to, to prove that you have PTSD today. Now, there are things that you do need. For example, you need a diagnosis of a condition today, in this case, PTSD. <laughs> if you just submit your claim without one of those, doesn't matter what it is, unless it's tinnitus, in my opinion, you're going to lose it automatically. So keep that in mind. And if you have any evidence that will help you, don't just blindly, you know, file a claim. You want to make it as strong as you want. And that's not legal or medical advice. That's my opinion. It's a strong one. So PTSD is treated like a presumptive for that reason, in my opinion. So let's move on to the presumptive claims. Not going to spend too much time here because it's PACT Act related. And the PACT Act is all the hype right now. It's why there's the biggest back, backlog um, in history, I think it is. Like recently we passed quite a large backlog and the VA did everything it could to reduce it. And now we're like back maybe even higher to where we were uh, before like that ramp process went in like five, five years ago, I think it's been a while now. Anyways, go to the website. If you went to those locations were exposed or you were exposed to certain materials, there's a list of conditions at the VA.gov website for, for PACT Act. It will show you what benefits, or what disabilities are under each of the exposures and the locations. And if you have a diagnosis of that condition, but you don't have any active duty medical evidence, well, that's presumptive, right? You can file a claim and the VA may reasonably presume that your condition today is caused by your location that you deployed to, or the burn pits in XYZ place, or maybe you were a nuclear person. And a couple of years from now, hopefully, the, the firefighting foam stuff, that junk that's in there, that's like, turns out to be really bad for the, us and the environment. Hopefully something will come out for that, but you know, these things take time. We'll see what happens. But basically, um, you don't need active duty medical evidence. You just need a diagnosis today. And again, you probably want to present the strongest uh, explanation as to why you believe your diagnosis for said condition in the PACT Act was caused by you know, your exposure back here when you deployed. Whatever the condition you're filing is, just as long as you walk the rationale um, to whatever happened to you uh, back in your service time, then you don't need 10 pieces of evidence from your active duty medical records that state that you went to the hospital for, let's say, your respiratory problems from the burn pits. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Now, we're going to talk about the secondaries now. Remember how I said a lot of you are going for sleep apnea and you're probably losing that as a direct service claim because no one goes to the hospital for sleep apnea. Like, like 1% of us might go for that on active duty if we're smart, which many of us, we were young then, we didn't care, right? We're like, I don't know if I snore, whatever. And you get out, you try to file it, you lose because there are no hospital visits on active duty for sleep apnea. But guess what? Let's say that you win a presumptive claim for your respiratory problems due to the burn pits, right? I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice, but common sense says that, hey, it's a respiratory problem. Maybe that contributes to my sleep apnea and maybe I can file sleep apnea secondary to a presumptive burn pit respiratory condition that I win. And that sounds like it's a lot more convincing than, hey, I went to the hospital. Oh, no, I didn't go to the hospital. Than saying, hey, I have sleep apnea today from my active duty service, but I didn't go to the hospital on active duty. That's not that believable by the VA standards. But if you're going to file it as a secondary to something that you do win, this case respiratory, um, you're probably going to have a higher chance of doing that. And this is something, if it were me, I would probably pay a doctor for it. But you do you, right? Whatever. Um, but I think your chances would be a lot higher going that route. Uh, and you know, that's just one small tweak in your strategy, right? Go for a presumptive first and then file the respiratory or the sleep apnea secondary 
to that presumptive claim once you win. And that one thing could possibly change your life, right? Maybe you don't have a disability and right there you get two of them, you know, that primary, the presumptive, and then the secondary. That's for some of you, that's going to help you a lot um, in changing your life. I know VA disability claims is a big deal for me, guys and girls. Um, if I didn't get my rating, I would probably would have fell apart, but it gave me what I needed to get back on my feet. And I hope it does the same for you and that this education was helpful. But it doesn't matter how smart you get. You can watch every video in the world, but if you do not change your, ed your behavior or apply the education, it does nothing for you. So take what you learn, look at your situation, and see what you can change change your life, win your claim, get everything you deserve, because some of you will never win that back claim, but maybe you'll win the presumptive, and then maybe you'll win a secondary to that presumptive. So I hope you got something from this. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.